Okay, get excited. Finally, we're going to get to talk about graphs. Now, other than maybe numbers, sets, and functions, I think graphs are probably the most important abstraction in all of computer science. Um, they show up everywhere, and, um, and it makes sense that they show up everywhere because they really capture, uh, in a nice, concise way, all kinds of binary relations. If you just have a bunch of things, I don't care what they are, let's say these are people, if they might have some relationship pairwise, you can think of those pairs as, as being connected. So let's just say this means um, your, um, maybe your friends. Let's do friends. Social networks are popular, right? Um, so I can draw if any, between any pair of these. If they're friends, there's an edge. And if there's no edge, right? So this means that the relation holds. These are related by whatever the relation is. In this case, I think we called it friends. And, uh, you know, if there's no edge, then that's not related. Okay, and so this is the kind of idea that we want to capture in a nice, simple abstraction. And we're going to call these graphs. Now, be careful because the picture, we'll draw a lot of pictures like this or variations of these pictures. The picture is not the graph. The graph um, has a formal definition which is very, very simple. It's simpler than the picture. Actually, thinking about a graph as a picture may seem more immediately intuitive, but in fact is more complicated than the real definition. The real definition is this. A graph is a pair of sets. Traditionally, we call them V and E, uh, where V is the vertex set. These are the vertices, and this is the edge set. So these are the edges. And the only requirement here is that, so these are any two sets, but we do require the following. The edge set should be a subset of pairs of vertices. So remember I have this notation V choose two, right? It's the set of all pairs. Um, they're unordered pairs. Now, you may have encountered other kinds of graphs uh, in other classes at other times. Right now, this kind of graph that I'm describing would sometimes be called a simple undirected graph, but I'm not going to throw in all these additives all the time. For the sake of this class, when I say a graph, I mean this, right? Just a pair of sets where the second set is a collection of pairs of the other of the first set, right? So the edges are, are two element subsets of V. Now, if I'm going to um, Well, if I, let's, let's, um, let's draw an example so we're, we're clear what we mean here. So I might draw a graph like this, okay, A, B, C. And there's, uh, you'll see different drawing styles about labels and like balls and stuff. Like I might draw a circle around these things or dots. And again, that doesn't matter. Uh, we'll talk about drawings extensively, um, but the drawing is not the graph. The graph is a combinatorial object, but it's really handy to be able to draw a picture. So if I say like this is the graph, then I've got a vertex set and an edge set, and I'm going to denote the vertex set of a particular graph, I'll call it V sub G, and in this case it's a three element set A, B, and C, because there's just those three vertices. Now uh, there's also the edge set of G, in this case it's, uh, well there's A, B, and B, C, two pairs. Now usually this would be two element subsets, and it is, but um, it's really not so fun to draw so many curly braces. I'm going to use parentheses to describe my edges. Now usually we would keep parentheses for ordered pairs, um, but these are not ordered. There's no, there's no direction here. Um, so AB is the same as BA, um, but it's much more readable and much easier to write if I don't use the curly braces and I just use parentheses. All right. So um, here's an example of a graph. It's a, just a vertex set and edge set. Um, where the edges are pairs of vertices. That's all it is. Okay. Nothing more. Once you have a notion of graph, um, there's a couple other definitions we need to work with. So one comes up almost immediately is adjacency. Um, I've got this big red marker here. Let me write the two words and I'll switch to something else. My black marker was dying, but I've got a blue one here. Okay. These are two words that sound alike. They look kind of alike. Um, they're not the same. They are constantly confused for each other. 
um, but not by you because you will master this and you will use these words correctly. So adjacency is a relationship between uh, vertices. So two vertices are adjacent if there's an edge between them, right? So we'll say A, B are adjacent. I'll just summarize it or abbreviate it here. If A, B is, and so let me be careful here, to, in the vertex set, um, a and B are vertices that are adjacent if there's an edge AB in the graph. Um, a in V is incident to um, an edge E in E if A is an element of E. Okay, so in pictures, right, I've got A, B, and B here. This picture describes both of these words, right? A and B are adjacent, A and E are incident, also B and E are incident, and uh, we won't necessarily put an order on this incidence relationship. So we'll also say that E is incident to B and B is incident to E. Okay, so the difference again, adjacency is about a relationship between vertices, incidence is about vertex edge relationships. Uh, all right, so using this, we can define the degree of a vertex, one of the most fundamental properties you'll find here. The degree of a vertex, let's give it a name, let's call it V. So if I have vertex V and V, the degree of V is the number of edges incident to it. So number of edges incident to um, V, and it's also equal to the same time, both of these are true, the number of vertices adjacent to V. Okay, so you see in the two equivalent definitions, we get to use both of these words. And in pictures now, here's a vertex V. Um, uh, the degree of V here is four. It's got one, two, three, four edges coming out. There are four vertices adjacent to it, you might ask, well, what if two of these are the same? Well, that doesn't happen. Um, there's a very simple reason why it doesn't happen. Um, if I had, uh, if this was X and this was also X, when some weird picture like this, where it was V with two edges to X, um, well, this would not satisfy our definition of a graph because now I would have the pair VX appearing twice in a set and uh, an element can only appear at most once in the set, um, right? Um, if we were to bring this back, it does have to be a pair of sets. Um, and so e, is a, e being a set doesn't have any duplicates. Um, later at some point, maybe we'll talk about graphs where you have more than one edge between a pair, but you're gonna need a different, um, a different definition to encapsulate those. Um, so the definition we have right now um, does not allow it and so these two are the same, this doesn't happen, and we're good to go. So let's put a big X through here um, and continue. So, all right, if that's the definition of a degree, let, this, this is uh, enough for us to prove at least our first uh, fact about graphs. So um, here's, a, here's a nice little lemma, it goes like this. If I take the sum over all the vertices in a graph, Right, so let's just say that I have G is equal to VE. So I've got V and E are my vertex set and edge set respectively. And I sum up the degrees of the vertices. That's exactly equal to twice the number of edges. All right, so how do you prove something like this? First step in any proof really is to believe it. If I'm adding up all the degrees of all the vertices, it looks like you can think of this as adding up these little stars. Right, say this is a vertex. I, what I'm drawing here is a graph where I've kind of split the edges in half. And so um, when I take each vertex here and I add up its degrees, it's like I'm adding in each of the half edges. And so when I add them all together, I'm going to cover every edge exactly twice. So hopefully that will lead to a real proof. Um, let's just check. 
So 2 times the size of E, well, that would be just equal to taking the sum over all the edges of 2. Right? I could put a 2 here. And 2 happens to be uh, the, exactly the number of vertices incident to any one edge. Right? By definition, the edge set had to be a collection of pairs. So there's always exactly two vertices incident to any edge. So it's the number of vertices V incident to E. Now, uh, we might write that as follows. So this, again, is the sum over all the edges. The number of vertices incident to E is also like if I were to add sum over all the vertices. And for each one, I'm going to add 1 if it's incident to E and 0 otherwise. So let's write this. That's a big curly brace here. Uh, 1 if E is incident to V and 0 um, otherwise. Okay, now if I have a summation like this, I can reverse the order of the sums. So this would be like the sum over all V and V of uh, the sum of all E and E of this exact same thing. Uh, maybe I need a shorthand. Uh, I'll write it out. So, um, so now if you look at it, uh, it's starting to look right because I know I was trying to get something that was the sum of all over the vertices in the graph. And if I were to just look at this piece right here, let me highlight it. Just this piece right here. Right, this is the sum over all edges of, of 1 if that edge is incident to V. Well, that's exactly the degree of V, right? Because every, every edge that's incident to V will get counted once and none others. And so this is the sum over all V in V of the degree of V. Good. So there's our, there's our proof that the sum of the degrees of all the vertices in a graph is exactly twice the edges. All right. So it's a simple little combinatorial fact. And we're going to see a lot of these combinatorial facts um, relating um, facts about the vertices edges um, as a kind of a starting point. And then we're going to be able to do some more elaborate things as we go. Um, but we'll see more of that next time.